What's going on you guys? Welcome to my review of Panzer Corps 2. This is a sequel to the original 2011 Panzer Corps and I'm very stoked about this game so let's just dive right into the pros and cons. First pro that I want to mention here is these verbal briefings that you get at the beginning of a campaign. I love this. It's a nice touch. Kind of immerses you into like the battlefield as if you're like looking down at a table and one of your commanders is giving you like a briefing. Love that. Another pro I got for you guys is this gorgeous map. Flashback Games made a map that is just eye candy. And another cool thing I like about this map is the seasonal changes that happens to this map. So they got one for like winter and rain and all that. So all that's good. Love that. Another pro I got for you guys is the easy learning curve. You just click on a unit, tells you exactly where it can go, and you just click and it moves. Quick, easy, love it. And then if you want to attack a unit, right, you just kind of go to the hex next to it. It'll give you stats, right, on their losses, which would be minus 8, and my losses, which is minus 6. And I love that. So I can click here. This highlights. Click. Very simple, very easy to kind of just get an idea of what's going to happen. And, you know, also... You don't have to do the tutorial. At least I did it. You know, I kind of skipped the whole tutorial. I don't like tutorials. So I love that about this game. And you can play the tutorial if you want to. I just skipped it because I was able to figure stuff out within a couple of minutes. Now, let's get into the authentic units. So right here, we're going to go right into this purchase screen because look at how many units there are. I mean, you're looking at a lot. Panzer 4E, you got the Panzer 3G, Panzer 4F, totally so many different models. And you can see on the right hand, it changes stats. So, like, you can pick and choose the right tank for whatever operation or whatever scenario you're playing. I love that. And there's just so many units that each one of them is detailed incredibly. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And then when you go into the map, you can zoom in and get really beautiful models on the battlefield. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at a tank. And you know, when you're zooming in, you don't even see any pixelization. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's gorgeous. You would figure by this point it would be like blurred out, but no, I mean, you could even like count the rivets on the tank, which is wow. Now, another thing that I really like about this game is when you have these planes here, right? In the first Panzer Corps, right? If you wanted to go here, right? And you had the unit go here and you clicked end turn, the unit's going to be there. But watch this. As you can see, the plane just flew right back to this air base because planes can't just stay in the air. They actually have to return to the air base at the end of their turn. So this changes the way you're going to play the game because you can't just have the planes go all the way to, you know, where is this, Slomensk and just chill at Slomensk. No, you got to plan ahead. So your planes, you need to, while well, your, your land forces, you need to actually occupy these airfields so your fighters and your bombers can support you as you go deeper into enemy territory. The other thing which you, I'm not going to be able to show you quickly here is supply lines are really good in this game. You can cut off the enemy from supply. I really like that. I like that little addition that they added to the game. Now the big thing that I really like, and you know, this might not be a big thing for everybody, but I really like the animations. And I never get tired of them. So, like, let's do this. Like I said, I never get tired of that. I'm gonna do something crazy. <laughs> infantry after infantry. You know, I never get tired of that. It looks good. Other things I like, this music. That music is just amazing. So big props to Flashback Games and Slytherin for this amazing musical tracks. Love it. Now, other things that I really like about this is the sound effects. You, when you, oh, that's beautiful animation. But you, every, you know, the planes got sound effects, the tanks got sound effects. Really like that they added that in. 
paid coins. So another huge thing I love about this game, it's probably one of my favorite features, is that you can select on a unit, right? So I got this, what is this? This mech infantry here. And I can go here and I hit I can hit split. So the strength rating is 10 out of 10. It will do this. It'll split. And then what I can do is I can have one section go this way, and it'll be five out of five. And then I can have this side of the unit go this way. And I love this because yes, you lose some of the strength, well, you lose half the strength, but if you need units to go east and south and you're like, all right, I have to make a choice. You don't really have to make a choice now. You can actually split units into two and have them go each way. So I really love that. That changes tactics quite a bit and opens the game up so much. All right, and I think you could do this in Panzer Corps 1, but I'm just going to mention it anyway because I can't do this in a lot of games, right? I have a plane over this tank. You could actually have aerial assets over a land asset so you can click on it it can fire on it oh that was good <laughs> that came in handy so i really like that because a lot of games aerial units have to be separate from land units in the hex so now that they can share a hex i really like that it makes the game much more realistic another pro that i got is the fact that you can actually select one unit, right? And let's say I want to move this unit here, right? Click on it, and then while that unit's moving, I can move this other unit. Now, I know this might be a small thing, but I can't tell you how many games I've played where you have to wait till the other unit finishes moving or its animation, right? Before you can move the second unit. I can tell you I do this a lot where if I need to move a lot of units quickly, I could just click, move this guy, and then click on this guy, move him here, and it just speeds up the game quite a bit, especially if you want to grind through your turns quickly. Another pro that I got is this beautiful UI. So in Pentacore 1, you had a you know, much more old style UI, I would say. And it was okay, but I can tell you this is much more modern. It's much more sleek. It kind of opens up the map so it doesn't kind of clutter the map with UI. So you can actually cut this out. And as you can see, you can even minimize or increase this size, right? So I really like that the main focus is on the map. So the UI is kind of out of the way. I really love that. One other pro that I got is this game is addictive. I can't tell you how many times that like I'm moving units and I'm like, all right, this is my turn. This is my last turn. I'll uh, click end turn, watch whatever's going on. And then you're like, all right, well, you know what? The Soviets did this. You know what? Let me just play for one more turn. I really love that because every time I'm like, this is going to be my last time I'm going to save it. You always get that just one more turn feeling. So I really like that this game is so addicting. It, adds, it gives me so much more time in the game because I'm like, you know what? Let me just do one more turn and then one more turn and then one more turn. And then it just came out to be a whole hour right there. So I really love that. Another pro that I have is this editor. You get a scenario editor with this game and it's it's awesome. I love that Slytherin and Flashback Games adds the scenario editor. And Slytherin's been doing that to so many of their games. Pretty much most of all their games have a scenario editor baked in, which adds so much replayability. Because right now you got a you have a number of scenarios in this game. I believe it's around 60, but give it a couple of weeks, you're going to see fan-made scenarios in probably the hundreds in a couple months, you'll be seeing thousands, if not tens of thousands scenarios, which gives you so much replayability of this game. Love the fact that they do that. And the last thing I'll say is, in some scenarios, you can actually see enemy front lines and lines of control. So what territory, like for example, if this guy was surrounded, it'll actually show his area of operations and his lines of control. So, all right, now you, I have to go to the cons, and there's a few of them, and I hate listing these because this game is so great, but there's a few things I don't understand, and I'll tell you why. So, I'm playing Panzer Corps 2, and as you can see, I'm kind of like in a bird's eye view here. My frame rate, if you can't see it here, it's right now at 15 frames per second. 15. Generally, you never want to play a game under 30. That's why when I move, you can see it's like choppy. And it even goes down to single digits, goes down to nine frames per second, going back up to 16. Now, if you zoom in, 
right? It will jump to 20, and it's a little bit more smoother, but it's still under 30, so it's a little bit choppy if you can see it. I don't understand when I zoom out, though, and I go into this view. Watch, it goes to 23, then 25, 26, and it's in the 30s now, in the 40s now, and yeah, it's settling around 47 frames per second. So now, as you can see, it's much more smoother. And generally, I've been playing like this because the other views, it's just, it's so choppy. It just, I can't play the game without, like, it bothering me. Now, if you can see my specs here, I have this running at 1080p, everything on high. But if I do this, move graphical quality, and everything goes down to minimum, I can click save. And it's still, it's a little bit better, but it's still in the 20s. And it's still choppy if you move around. It'll go down to the teens. Now, what bothers me about this, as you can see, it does a lot to this game. I mean, it ch definitely changed a lot of the detail and a lot of the graphics and such. So, the thing that bothers me about this is I'm able to play, like, top-level games right we're talking paradox games like stellaris heart to iron eu4 imperator rome on high settings i'm able to play battlefield at really high settings and have frame rates at 50 to 60 frames per second so i i'm just kind of curious why a game where there's not that much stuff moving around like in battlefield like the environment keeps changing literally every second because you're moving back and forth back and forth and i'm still between 50 and 60 frames and the level of detail is so immense in that game so i'm just kind of curious why and i know this is running the unity engine and i know i had previous problems with unity engine with previous games like u-boat now i am running an amd 560 with 4 gigs of video RAM, and I'm running a 7th generation Intel Core i5, I believe at 3 gigahertz. So it's a quad core, and it, it it has a lot of muscle. So I'm very curious about it. Now, if I go into the Xbox game overview, which you guys can see, right now the game is using 35% of my CPU, 66% of the GPU, and 58% of my RAM. And it generally hovers around that. So it's not utilizing all my assets, all the horsepower of my computer. So, I don't know, maybe a patch can fix it to maybe to increase the detail and increase the frame rate and just keep the resolution at 1080p. Because a lot of times I'll have to drop to 720p, which makes, even if you put textures on high, it doesn't look as good. Now, my last con is the multiplayer system. So... I usually, I've been trying to play a PBEM game, and I signed into both sections, but I'll sign into my Steam section. Now, the problem that I'm having here is when I go into my games, right, I've been trying to play a buddy of mine, uh, Uda Guda, or my buddy Bob. If you guys know what Uda Guda stands for, put it in the comment section below, because that's big props. So, I'm going to click create a challenge, right? So I've noticed between the beta and now, there was a couple things removed. There was an advanced tab here that put in a whole bunch of selections, but it's not here anymore in the vanilla version of the game or the 1.04 version of the game. So I was playing Steel vs. Steamroller, right? I hit Create Game, and as you can see, it makes me the Soviets automatically it doesn't let me choose which side i, I want to play and then when bob comes in the game he selects join it makes him the germs automatically so the way we had to get around this was he had to create the challenge which made him the soviets and then i joined the challenge which made me the germans and it was just kind of odd that that system works that way it was just very confusing it took us a good 20 25 minutes to figure that out which was confusing and it just it didn't make a great experience Another thing I noticed in here is when I was creating a challenge, you can't add a password. So anybody can join, which I didn't like. So I wish there was like a password section where, you know, I could tell my buddy, hey, here's the password. The password is one, two, three, four, five or whatever. Right. And then he could select that and go into the game. So, yeah, I mean, it was the multiplayer system needs some work. 
But overall, guys, I really, really like this game. This is such a leap forward for the Panzer series. They added so much awesome stuff between the maps, the textures, the environments from desert to mountain, the seasonal changes, the splitting of units, the supply system. There's so much to love about this game. Now, I did mention two major cons for the game, which is the performance. Now, a couple of my buddies haven't really run into that. Uh, Historical Gamer, he mentions that he does run into lags every so often, and he has a 1080 NVIDIA. My buddy Bob, who has a high-end AMD 295, he says he doesn't experience lag too often. Maybe it's just my mid-range card. I'm not sure. I'm trying to find out more information about that, contacting other people. But I will actually let you guys know on this channel in the future about what I find. But overall, guys, if you were kind of wondering, should I buy Panzer Corps 2? Is it a good sequel to the original or even a great sequel to the original Panzer General? I would say yes. Leaps and bounds, yes. Love this game. Over time, I'm assuming the performance is going to get better. The multiplayer system is going to get fixed. And at that point, the game will be just be amazing and perfect. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. I will catch you guys in the next one.